in Jesus' name. In the forefront, not an afterthought. Thank you for joining me today. July 4th, 1776, Independence Day, or as many of us call it, the 4th of July. It's a time when all Americans get together to celebrate their freedom in becoming an independent nation. Or is it? In today's story, we will learn that not all Americans became free with the signing of the Declaration of Independence. People that look like me and you didn't become free until much later. We will learn about this and so much more. So let's go ahead and get started. Juneteenth by Vonda Musho Nelson and Drew Nelson. Illustrations by Mark Schroeder. Jubilee. It is June 19th, 1865, a hot day in Texas. Clouds decorate the bright blue sky on a farm outside the city of Galveston. A man hoes corn. Five miles away, a teenage boy chops wood. Nearby, a woman scrubs the floor. Her sister melts a cow in the barn. It seems like a normal day. Then a message arrives in Galveston. It races from ear to ear through town. The message is carried to the countryside by riders on horseback. It is carried by wagon and by people on foot. The people on foot are running because the message is so important. When the news reaches the man in the cornfield, tears roll down his cheeks. Five miles away, the young woodcutter plants his axe in a stump and runs to hug his father. Nearby, the woman stops scrubbing and dances across the wet floor. Her sister drops a bucket of milk and falls to her knees. As the news spreads across Texas, people stop working and jump for joy. These men, women, and children were not ordinary workers. They were black slaves. The news that arrived on June 19th changed their lives forever. On that day, General Gordon Granger arrived in Galveston. He read an order from President Abraham Lincoln. The order said that the slaves were free. This was good news, but it was old news. President Lincoln had given the order in 1863. But slaves in some places were not told right away. It took more than two years for the order to reach Texas slaves. When it finally did, the streets of Galveston rang with black voices shouting, We're free! 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 Slavery. But how did black people become slaves? Imagine that you are playing outside. Suddenly, you are captured in a net like an animal. You are packed in the bottom of a ship with many other stolen people. You are taken far away to another country. You are forced to stand naked on a platform called an auction block. A man pays money for you. He owns you now. You are his slave. You must do everything he says. He can do whatever he wants to you. He can make you work. He can put chains on you. He can whip you, even kill you. You never again see your home or your family. Beginning in 1619, these things happened to millions of African people. They were taken to North America and to other places as slaves. Why did Americans want slaves? Some people in the North wanted housekeepers and farmhands. Many Southerners needed people to work on their plantations. Plantations were huge farms for cotton, tobacco, corn, and other crops. 
plantation owners sold these crops to make money. The owners could keep more money if they did not have to pay the people who worked for them. They did not pay slaves. War, 1861-1865 Not everyone wanted slavery. Many people in the North and some in the South wanted to free the slaves. They knew that slavery was wrong, and they spoke against it. They believed that all people are created equal. Most Southerners did not want slavery to end. Without slaves, who would pick their crops and chop their wood? Who would cook their meals and clean their houses? Also, many white people believed they were better than black people. They believed that blacks were not equal, so slaves did not deserve to be free. Northern leaders would not give up, and the southern states would not give in. Finally, a group of southern states decided that they could no longer be a part of the United States. They broke away and formed the Confederate States of America. Now the country was divided into two parts, the Confederacy in the South and the Union in the North. On April 12, 1861, armies from the two sides began to fight. This was the start of the Civil War. Freedom On January 1, 1863, President Lincoln signed a special order called the Emancipation Proclamation. It said that slaves in the Confederate States were forever free. Many plantation owners did not tell their slaves about President Lincoln's order. They wanted the slaves to keep working. Even when the owners knew that the South would lose the war, they wanted one more free harvest. But Union soldiers brought the news to slaves as the troops moved through the South. Those slaves spread the word to others. Thousands of freed slaves joined the Union Army to help win the war. Some Texas slaves heard tales about freedom, but they couldn't be sure these stories were true. Slaves had to be careful. If they even talked about freedom, their owners might punish them. Slaves who tried to leave the plantations would be whipped or killed. All they could do was wait and hope. Finally, in April 1865, the Union won the Civil War. More than 700,000 people from the North and the South had died fighting in this war. On June 19th, Union General Granger brought the news of freedom to Galveston. Texas was the last state where the official announcement was made. Slaves no more. Not everyone believed the announcement. More than 200 years had passed since Africans were first captured and brought to North America. By 1865, most slaves in North America had been born here. The only life they knew was slavery. Then, in an instant, they were free. Once slaves knew the truth, they stopped working. The moment was scary and wonderful. They were free. They laughed and cried, shouted and prayed. They danced and sang, gathered and hugged. They imagined their lives as free Americans. Some former slaves left the plantations with just the clothes on their backs. They didn't know where they were going. They were happy just to be free to go anywhere. Many searched for loved ones who had been sold to other plantations. Some were reunited with their families. Others never found their parents or children. Some former slaves found jobs in cities. Others could not because white people wouldn't hire them. Many stayed on plantations because they had nowhere else to go. The slaves were free, but black Americans would struggle for equal rights for a long time. 
Still, the end of slavery brought great joy and a reason to celebrate. Juneteenth. On June 19, 1866, one year after they had learned of their freedom, former slaves came together to celebrate the city of Galveston was alive with music. The sweet, smoky smell of barbecue filled the air. Black Texans were wearing their Sunday best. They gathered and hugged. They shared news and told stories. They sang spirituals celebrating freedom. No more slavery chains for me. No more, no more. Folks attended ceremonies, worship services, and parades to mark the day. This was the first of many June 19th celebrations in Texas. And when black Texans moved to other states, they took the tradition with them. But how did June 19th become Juneteenth? At first, Texans called it Freedom Day, Emancipation Day, Jubilee, or simply June 19th. As years passed and freedom stories were told and retold, June and 19th blurred together into Juneteenth. Today, Juneteenth is celebrated much like the first anniversary in 1866. People of all colors arrive at parks, churches, schools, and backyards for picnics. The sweet, smoky smell of barbecue fills the air. Potato salad, corn on the cob, biscuits, homemade ice cream, cakes, pies, and melons crowd the tables. Red velvet cake and red soda pop are traditional treats. Red honors all the people whose blood was shed in slavery and in the struggle for freedom. Festive parades fill city streets with music and dancing. Black cowboys and cowgirls clop through town on horses. Miss Juneteenth waves from a decorated float. Folks stroll along singing songs of freedom and patriotism. Spirited baseball games bring whoops and hollers from excited fans. Foot races, sack races, and rodeos spark cheers and laughter. At the catwalk, people clap their hands and tap their feet. Dancers turn and leap, strut, and quick step to win the grand prize, a delicious cake. Worship services and readings of the Emancipation Proclamation are important parts of Juneteenth. Speakers tell and retell stories of slavery and freedom. They share tales of why Texan slaves were last to get the news. One legend says that the first messenger sent with the proclamation was murdered along the way. Another story says he was given a very, very slow mule to ride. People laugh, but no one forgets the real reason for the late news. No one forgets that Juneteenth is not just a day to have fun. It is a time to remember. Juneteenth is celebrated in big or small ways, almost everywhere in the United States. The government of Texas made it a state holiday on January 1, 1980. From Florida to Alaska, California to New Jersey, other states across the nation have followed this example. Some people believe that June 19th should be a national holiday, like Thanksgiving or the 4th of July. Wherever it is celebrated, Juneteenth is a time to sing praises for the end of slavery in the United States. If you didn't get a chance to, go back now and answer the questions on each page. Then come back and complete these activities. I hope you enjoyed the story. If so, give it a thumbs up and click subscribe so you'll be notified when there are more videos. Thank you and remember to let your light sparkle.